big time offensive lineman committed to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in Zionsville, Indiana High. Offensive tackle Joey Tanona. Patrick, class of 2022 commitments. So rising junior, Notre Dame's very much still working on its 2021 recruiting class, but they have its first offensive line pledge, and it's a big one. Um, held 14 offers in total. Um, LSU, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State, Purdue, Tennessee. Um, so big time schools after him um, and a really big time commitment for Notre Dame. This is absolutely the type of guy that Notre Dame should be targeting and, and landing on the offensive line with you know, some regularity. And certainly saw that early on in the 2021 class with Blake Fisher out of the same area in greater Indianapolis. And now getting Joey Tonona, who's had offers from all the Big Ten heavy hitters and SEC teams, ranked as a four-star kid on Rivals. Definitely someone that you want to start your offensive line class and, and build around and, and kind of the guy you want to be getting. Yeah. At least one of every year, kind of a guy who can play guard or tackle. You see a lot of, uh, you know, nastiness to him in a sense. He's, he's a finisher and, and really likes to, uh, you know, really finish off blocks and, and definitely a, a total whistle player. And you see some bend and, and mobility too, especially as he plays left tackle, but occasionally you still see him used as a puller someone who can get to the second level pretty easily and, uh, and kind of knife through a lot of, a lot of traffic there. So you like the mobility and, and the strength kind of combination there, which on one hand you can project a guard, but on the other, you want someone with the, the frame and, you know, the athleticism he has that would be able to hold up a tackle too. Yeah. I mean, if he's six five two eighty as a sophomore and, and you know, whenever there's height weights, you're always take, I, I typically will say, all right, you're probably a half inch to a full inch shorter than you're listed and maybe about five to 10 pounds smaller. Um, but, you know, if he was listed at six five two eighty as a sophomore, he, he's got to be, you know, a real six five or six six. So I, and again, he's, he's going into his junior year of high school. Um, so I, I think he's a tackle at the next level. You mentioned this is a kid Notre Dame should be able to sign every cycle, especially considering from Indianapolis. You looked at Notre Dame offensive line recruiting the past few years, and everyone likes a dog Jeff Quinn, right? Um, but that 2019 recruiting class had all had four four-star offensive linemen, um, and we haven't really, uh, other than um, uh, you no, know, for the I don't think any of those 2019 guys have really seen the field yet. So we're um, you know, Quinn Carroll was the really the lead dog um, of that class. I was going to say Jarrett Patterson, but he's in the 2018 class. Um, so, you know, all these guys since 2019, you know, we're not 100% sure what they're going to be yet. But if you look on paper, the 2019 class was stellar. Um, 2020 had Blake Fisher. Um, um, excuse me. In 2020, you had Tosh Baker and Michael Carmody, a pair of highly ranked prospects on rivals. Look at 2021 with Blake Fisher kind of being that lead dog and, and a few solid guys behind him. And 2022, starting with a really good player in Joey Tenona. Interestingly enough, Patrick, this is a guy who finished his sophomore year of high school, excuse me, sophomore year of um, football without a singer scholarship offer. Um, you know, at that point, he was maybe hoping for an offer from Indiana State um, and, and not even thinking about Notre Dame. Um, so in January, you know, picks up, I think it was Purdue and Tennessee the following month. And then it just blows up um, in April without the spring evaluation period when LSU – um, Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State and Notre Dame both offered on May 1st. So uh, Jeff Quinn did a really good job beating out those programs and really having just weekly calls, um, talking with him um, and, and really swaying him towards the Fighting Irish in the past couple of months. So all in all, really good commitment. Um, offensive line recruiting of Notre Dame. Uh, people, you know, have their criticisms of Jeff Quinn, but you know, when you look on paper and whether it's star rankings, offer lists, you have all these data points, um, you know, I, I would still say that they're recruiting at a high level. Yeah, absolutely. And you, know, you just look at 2019, 20, and, and 21 kind of still left to be sorted out. Obviously still have a big target in Rocco Spindler on the board, but Blake Fisher, if nothing else, is a good baseline. This is exactly kind of the start you wanted to see in 2022. And all I can think of when you kind of look at him and watch some of his games from his sophomore year of why he didn't have any offers is that you know, for whatever reason, these teams must have just not seen his tape until too late. Cause it's, you know, it's certainly good enough to, to justify the, the interest that he had. Definitely. 